Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Are you tired of hearing me sing? Well, I'm going to do it anyway. Hey everybody, it's Alex and it is, of course, a program we like to call The Ramble. It goes till midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and in about a half hour from right now, or about 25 minutes from right now, we'll uh, get down to a business with our citizen panel, which is a whole bunch of people getting together in kind of like a town hall and discussing things, everything from politics to social issues to how their prostate is today. Uh, we'll get to that in about 25 minutes from right now, but, you know, I love to talk to this guy. There are very few people in the world of comedy who are known as legends, and Larry Bubbles Brown isn't one of them. Hi, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Very few legends in this business. <laughs> Who are legends? Who are legends in the comedy business? Who are le uh, David Tell? Man. You know, there are there are those legends that come and go. And all everybody goes, oh, he's a legend. And then they disappear. Uh, yeah. On, uh, you know the show, uh, I'm Dying Up Here? I've seen one episode, but I am familiar with it. Well, last episode. week... Damarera lived up to the title of the show. They killed him off. Oh, really? Yes. He died. And as yeah, how did they how did they kill him off? He had a heart attack. Oh. Okay. So mm -hmm. then they hold a wake for him, and he's lying there. They have him on a table in the center of the room, with his arms crossed, dead. Right. And then they're all toasting mm -hmm. him and doing things like that. And then she starts reading a letter that he wrote a couple of years before when he had had a stroke once before and heart attack once before to be read if he ever died. And she starts reading it, and then the voice becomes Dom Herrera's. And it's a series, uh, it's him willing certain jokes to certain people. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And it was pure Dom. It's the most he ever had to do on that show, and it's in two seasons. Um, but he was basically doing his act, you know. Uh, do you use a dictaphone? No, I use my finger like everybody else. <laughs> you know, and shit like that. I'm dying. Because to me, well, Dom Herrera is a legend. When I first started, I hear I heard comics are talking and they're telling me this is the funniest guy in the world. I kept hearing his name. Yeah. And his comedy, it was the comedy of relentlessness where he would take something and he would just, it was like Kevin Meany was the, uh, the, uh, the same kind of comedian in that respect, where they would start doing something and keep doing it over and over and over and over until it got to a point of pain and then it got to a point of hysterics. Yeah, you know. uh, required commitment. Uh, if, uh, commitment, great. exactly. Um, but if anybody has a chance, uh, Dom Marrera, they have like one night stands and stuff on HBO uh, on demand. And you should go see uh, Dom Marrera, I R R E A? Am I thinking? A rare. I R R E R A, I think. Yeah, something like that. Just put in I R R, and I think you'll, you know. You'll get Dom Herrera. But he to me he that he he will always be a legend to me, you know. Uh, and he was in the Big Lebowski. Was he in the Big Lebowski? He was a limo driver at a small park. You're now. right. I forgot that. Son of a bitch. Son of a yeah. bitch. Yeah, no, a uh, uh, Dom is uh, uh just there are comedians that I'm saying Dom Herrera to an audience here, and they're going, who the fuck's Dom Herrera? And you ask any comedian who Dom Herrera is, and they go, oh, fucking Dom Herrera. He's great. Yeah. You know, but, you know, we've often talked about this. Why do some people become big and other people don't? And I think it's just a matter of 
persistence. I mean, how many bad comics are there out there that make it? I mean, who was that? Oh, I- too many, way too many. I mean, like, who was that idiot a few years ago? Who was getting everything, making movies with him and the whole everything? Uh, and he, he got himself going because he, he, he gave away his act for free on the Internet so people could see it. And he wasn't funny. He wasn't very good. So they gave him movies and TV shows and everything. Because he Who won. Huh? Who was that? I'm trying to remember now. See, that's how, how bad he was that I don't remember who he was. <laughs> but, I mean, he had a major career for about a week and a half. And then all of a sudden. Well, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you somebody who, to me, is having that kind of career right now is Amy Schumer. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry, folks, but I don't get Amy Schumer. You yeah. know, I thought about three or four years ago when I first saw her, I thought she was a... Oh, oh we just lost... We we lost a Larry. Oh, hold on a second, folks. We will call him right back. Yeah. All of a sudden, our, our Skype just went... Pfft. Yeah. There we go. Well, let's see here. Do we get, do we get Larry? Hello, Larry. Yeah, we, what happened? I don't know. All of a sudden, Skype went south on me here so well we were talking about amy schumer we we're talking about amy schumer uh and it has nothing with the fact but to do with the fact that i find her uncle to be a terrible <laughs> senator but that's another story all <laughs> charles schumer looks like the guy that's really the guy that's always trying to sell you the extended warranty i said no he always looks to me like my uncle at passover <laughs> You know, with the with the eye with the, the with the glasses down around the nose thing and the whole thing. Anyway, uh, I just you know I don't get Amy Schumer. I just uh, you know to me she's just fat. You know. Oh, did I fat her? I'm sorry. <laughs> did you body shame her? <laughs> I body shame her. She has no shame with her body. And by the way, I saw Amy Schumer or oh, uh, some special of hers from about five years ago. And she was just pleasingly plump. I, I like those kind of women. But now mm-hmm. she's just getting, you know. But anyway, I don't get her. I don't see what's funny about her. You know, oh, Alex, you just don't like female comics. I love Sarah Silverman. You know, I think Sarah Silverman's great. I know. Do you like her? Uh, yeah, I've always liked her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are quite a few other comics, uh, female comics, that I that I think are terrific. So it has nothing to do with being a female comic. It just has to do with the fact that, I don't know, funny is supposed to make me laugh. And if it doesn't make me laugh, it's not funny. And she doesn't make me laugh. I try. I give her the benefit of the doubt. You know, she's I'll got... I'll have to watch her again. The last time I saw her, it just seemed, it was kind of like, seemed like it was all kind of shock value. Well, it's, it's all agentry and press relations and things like that, you know. But, and the perception that if you say somebody's great enough, people are going to say, oh, they're great. I mean, people are people that stupid? Yes, they're absolutely that stupid. Okay? Uh, and... Uh, 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 you know, they, they, they're told that somebody is the comedy du jour and uh, son of a bitch, they're the comedy du jour. Mm-hmm. So, so that, you know, the problem is you, you know, as I, as I said so many times, you know, you don't get up in the morning and say, OK, I got to find work. You know, I've got to find places to do my act. You kind of sit there and if the phone rings and it's a gig, good, you put it on your calendar. Yeah. You know. <laughs> So, I mean, that's the difference, you know? I mean, to show uh, the audience uh, how um, non-aggressive you are, you went on the Letterman show and absolutely killed. I mean, everybody agreed. Letterman loved you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the producers said you did great, right? And they said, they sent me a letter. <laughs> they sent you a letter, right? And they uh-huh. said, when you get another five minutes, you know, Give us a call and we'll we'll book you, put you on the show. We'll go out and see it and work it out with you so it's good on the air and so on, right? Mm-hmm. And so how long did it take you before you got back in touch with them? Uh, 21 years. 21 years. That's what. <laughs> now, if you've gotten a hold of them like five weeks later, 
<laughs> you might be a star today, for Christ's sake. But no, I got well. I got back to him in 21 years. Well, <laughs> is that how long it took you to get another five minutes? <laughs> the material didn't come easy. <laughs> it didn't come easy. Another five minutes of material, boy. I finally got it after 21 years. I think I was getting 20 seconds a year average. <laughs> Hell, I changed my mind faster than that, Larry. <laughs> That seems funny now that you put it that way. When I put it that way, it seems like you blew a really good opportunity is what it... And you went back on the next time and did just as well as you did the first time, right? I think I actually did better the second time. Yeah, and they loved you, right? Yes. And did they say, come back and see us again? They, they were definitely interested, and I... Uh, didn't follow up on that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The and then air. the show got taken off the air, and there's no way you now yeah. can go on the David Letterman show. And right. if you go over to the Jimmy Fallon show, they'll say, who the fuck was David Letterman? You know, <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. And they'll say, you're over 25. You're <laughs> over 25, yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, of course, you're, you are facing ageism. There's no question about it, you know. And you would think in comedy there'd be no such thing as ageism. But there really is. Oh, it's rampant. So. Yeah. Uh, I remember the days when the HBO used to do a thing called the Young Comedian Special. And the reason why it was called the Young Comedian Special is because all the old ones were big. All right? And it was usually one of the old ones, like uh, Rodney Dangerfield, who emceed the Young Comedian Special. And then you'd have people on there like Dana Carvey and... Um, um, uh, any one of a number of, of great people. But um, uh, who, do you have one comic who you say was the greatest you ever saw? I thought when, I, he kind of disintegrated towards the end, but in his prime, I, I was really blown away by Sam Kennison. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a time there where he was just unbelievable. See, when you talk, when we, talk, we mentioned legends, when you talk about legends, uh, I got to, I got to mention Bill Hicks, you know, uh, and now everybody out there has got a big question mark over their head going, Bill Hicks? Um, had he lived, um, he would have been huge. I think. Yeah, and he was, that That makes more of a legend because just as he was starting to pop, he dies. Well, I think he was a legend at the time that he died. You know, a lot of people were saying, this is, uh, when I saw him, you know, I always used to have people come to me and they would go, oh, have you seen so-and-so? He's the next Lenny Bruce. And I'd go see the person, I'd go, this is no Lenny Bruce. Nobody, uh, these people <laughs> don't understand what Lenny Bruce was about. And then I saw Bill Hicks. And I went, now, if you want to say somebody's like Lenny Bruce, this is the guy. This is the guy who works dangerously. This is a guy who is mad, you know, at what he sees around him, and he reports it. And I just thought Bill Hicks was wonderful. Yeah. And then one day I'm at the punchline. He's playing. I'm backstage with him, back in the back room. And he says to me, uh, I'm, uh, I'm quitting uh, comedy. I said, what? He says, yeah, I'm quitting comedy. I've, I've ha I'm not doing it anymore. I'm going back to Texas or wherever he was from, and uh, I'm going to, you know, not do comedy anymore. What he didn't tell me was he was dying. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of a sudden, uh, we get word that I think I got word that Bill Hicks died. And he died of pancreatic cancer. Right. Um, 32, dies of pancreatic cancer. Uh, and I was really amazed by it. I was, I was absolutely um, amazed that this guy suddenly, at so young, was dead. And uh, boy, did he go quick. He went quick, well, pancreatic cancer. You know. He did the uh, he did the Letterman show where they cut him out. Yep, was uh, October of ninety three, and he was dead February ninety four. Yeah, and I remember 
I went over to um, the Letterman show to, uh, I, because Shecky works there, so I can go up and see Shecky. So I, I, uh, and I maybe I called Shecky. Could have been I called Shecky. And I said, did you hear about Bill Hicks? And Shecky's first reaction was, well, what did he do now? <laughs> and my answer was, he died. He died. <laughs> and Shecky went, what? He died? What? I said, yeah, pancreatic cancer. And he was just stunned. And then they went in and they told Dave, and Dave was really stunned and started to have a guilt complex because what they had done is he went on the show okay he it was like one of the first weeks that letterman was on cbs one of the first weeks there on cbs yes and so you know it, that was a time didn't want to rock the boat didn't want to rock the boat they didn't want people to say letterman can't work at eleven thirty-five. you know he, he so uh here comes Hicks and they approve everything he's going to do on the, in his act, and he has one part in his act where he goes um, um, something about uh, why why do um, uh, people of religion of, of Christian religion wear crosses, which is the symbol of the place where their Lord died? It was the method of execution. I mean, that's like Jackie Kennedy walking around with a, a, pen, a, a, a rifle pendant around her neck. Uh, no, no, that wasn't the joke. That, no, wait a minute, that was, that was part of what they didn't say he could do. What he, what he did do was he said, it was something about burying abortion? people. No, it was, oh, it was about abortion. Yeah. I thought it was abortion. Yeah, it was abortion. That's what it was. Um, I'm trying to remember what the joke was. Um, but basically, he was talking about you know funerals and cemeteries and dead people. Oh yeah, why? Oh, yeah, if we if we're so much against killing pe people dying, you know, let's just ban uh, uh, ban uh, cemeteries. I think that was the line, something like that. Well, anyway, he he he's finished. Uh, Morty, the producer of the show, Bob Morton. Great job, terrific. Best I've ever seen you, Bill. And Bill uh, told me in retrospect that he felt it was the best set he ever had on that show. And he had done it really? several wow. times. Yeah. He said, they finally will get, get me, okay, that before I had to water it down and all of that, this one, they'll get me. Goes back to the hotel. He's ready, you know, for 1130 to come by so he can see what he, what he did. And he gets a call from Bob Morton. We're not running it. <laughs> what? We're not running it. Uh, Dave's worried about the material. Uh, and so they didn't run it. Instead, they ran an interview when they did the test shows for the late, late Night with David Letterman. A few weeks earlier, they were doing test shows. They had somebody come in to be interviewed uh, who was just kind of like, you know, they were testing the show out, right? They mm -hmm. ran that instead of Hicks. Wow. And so Hicks's uh, set never ran. Letterman, after the death of Bill Hicks, was so guilty about this whole thing because in retrospect, he saw that he was being too safe, okay? Safer than he had to be. And that he had wronged Bill Hicks. And he went out and he had Bill Hicks' mother on the show and then showed the whole set. Showed the whole set, yeah. Yeah, on the program uh, to kind of make himself feel better about it. But mm -hmm. he really felt horrible about the, I don't think he would have felt as horrible if Hicks had lived, okay? But the fact that he died. You're right, yeah. And the last time he had ever been on television was when he was almost on television. And the day after that thing happened at the Letterman show, Hicks called my show and said, told the story of what happened and, and how, well, how he was cut out of the Letterman show. Uh, and then uh, John Lahr of uh, the... Uh, a New Yorker or something, wrote an article on Bill Hicks, and part of the article was about him and the Letterman show, and he quotes the interview I did with Hicks that day uh, about why he didn't get on. So, you know, that was, that was one of the big... That, he, not only was he a legend, to, in my mind, as a comedian, but he's a legend because of that story. You know? Yeah. So... Um, 
you know, so the, the, the Bill Hicks was to me, if I had to say to somebody, have you ever worked with a leg, comedy legend in your time? I'd have to say, well, you know, I've, I've done Carlin and, you know, I've done this person, or I've done that person. I said, but the true legend was Bill Hicks. You know, this was a guy who, if he had lived, what he would have given to the world in comedy. I mean, his timing was impeccable. His stage presence was amazing. Uh, it was like when he got on a stage, it was like that's where he woke up in the morning and went to sleep at night. You know, yeah. he was more comfortable there than he was anywhere else. So anyway, that was Bill Hicks. And he was. Yeah, and he was a nice, he actually worked with him a couple of times. He's a nice guy. Great too. guy. Great guy. Yeah. How ma I mean, how many people in the comedy business can you say about that? Great guy. I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's shark waters, so he was well, uh, an uh, exception. It, it, yeah, it's shark waters, and he refused to be a shark. Yeah. But uh, um, uh, any comedians come to mind like that to, to you? you? You said oh, like Kinnison. I said, Kinnison, uh, I think Attell was uh, great. Uh who else? Who else? Well, you've booked some money on your New Year's show. Who do? Who well, well, you, do you, you know, you know who they did a documentary on. Judd, Judd Apatow did an, a, a, a documentary on the life of Gary Shandling. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, my, Shandling was definitely one of my idols. I should have mentioned him. Yeah. And and when I when I think about Shandling, I I think about the fact that I just kind of he was always there in my life and I never thought of him as special but when you take his whole life put it together and then place it before an audience to watch you suddenly realize this guy was a fucking genius yeah you know of the kind of stuff he talked about the kind of stuff that he did you know was nothing funnier than the Larry Sanders show uh no very funny show very funny concept now you know what I was watching yesterday. There's a documentary on Netflix. Everybody should watch it. Call it's called The Last Laugh, and it's about ho uh, about concentration camp and Holocaust humor. <laughs> uh, and the fact that, for instance, in the concentration camps, they did shows and they told jokes to each other, and uh, you know it was gallows humor in a lot of cases, you know, but it was the way they kept themselves alive. But, yeah, you have to. But they started talking about the good taste and bad taste, and like Mel Brooks says, he his he will not ever do a joke about the Holocaust. He said, "But Nazis are funny. Nazis, Nazis you make fun of funny. because it it demystifies them, you know." <laughs> and Gilbert Gottfried tells this joke: uh, Two Jews are assigned with the task of killing Hitler, assassinating Hitler. So they wait outside his home, and they know he's supposed to be there around noon. 12.30, no Hitler. 2 o'clock, still no Hitler. 2.30, Hitler still hasn't shown up. 3 o'clock, one looks at the other and says, do you think something happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> or, or better, better yet, I think the line is, you think he's okay? <laughs> now, the question is, is that a taste, a bad taste joke? It's about Hitler, you know. But no, it's not, because it's, it's, it's about Nazis, and you're making fun of the Nazis. And um, uh, Brooks said, when I was in the Catskills, I was doing my Hitler impressions, you know. But I, I wouldn't wear a swastika when I did it. He said, that I had to get to the producers to have them wear a swastika. You know, uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it so the, and then one other thing that Gilbert said, because Gilbert is always great for a quote, right? Right. Like in my case, it is. Is Alex Bennett still alive? <laughs> um, um, no, but um, uh, his his thing was, he said, they say uh, that uh, comedy is is tragedy plus time equals comedy. Right. And he said, my problem is I'm too impatient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, so and who said that originally? Com comedy plus time, or rather, tragedy plus time equals comedy. I'm trying to remember who said it. 
Could it have been Lenny? I don't know. But anyway, yeah. It's a great quote. And uh, yeah, Gilbert, <laughs> Gilbert has no filter. <laughs> Gilbert has no filter at all. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he lost the whole duck account because of that. You know, the he lost account. that, which was like, <laughs> wasn't he getting paid a quarter of a million just to go whack <laughs> and make a funny sound? He, he told me this. This is true. And then we got to go. But this is absolutely true. They would. I said. So they they recorded you saying Affleck, right? I said, how many times did they record you saying that? And then they keep using the Affleck over and over again. And he went, oh, I go in every time to do a new Affleck. Wow. He said it never changes, but they make me do it over again. So he did his Affleck thousands of times. So. And he made a fortune. And he made a fortune out of it. Yeah. And then he stopped making a fortune out of it and made a fortune out of having been the Affleck duck. So, you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you love him, you know him. I love having him on because we have a nice talk every time. His name is and Larry you Bubbles. You me about technology. Larry Bubbles Brown, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gavin. The Great American Broadcast Network. And hello, everybody. Wait a minute. Oops. Wait a minute. No, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the soft way. There we go. Uh, let me put on my. Uh, let me put on my uh, shirt here. The reason I put this on is for some reason it makes the uh, picture brighter. I, I have no idea why. But well, uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to do the next couple days work on this picture. I, it's uh, getting too too light in color and uh, uh, I'm you know I, I've got to get it working here right so anyway uh, let me see here maybe I can maybe I can make it a little brighter right now why don't I do that huh 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 why don't I do that there we go let me see here let me go configure video and then let me go to to brightness okay and uh, well, here we go Okay, brightness. Uh, bring it up a notch. Just a notch. Just a little bit. There we go. Oh, hey, I like that. I like that. Okay. All right, apply, and we're fine. Okay, now we now we look a little better. I uh, I, I felt it was getting a little too dark. Uh, so so's the show. Anyway, listen, it's time to go to the citizen panel. Let me just get everything up and going here. Uh, okay. Uh, the Skype lines are now active. Okay. Uh, but I'll get rid of some of these people here, um, that have called recently. And, uh, we can, uh, uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Okay. Now uh, everything's ready to go, and all I need now are callers. Uh, <laughs> yes, all I need are callers. Uh, and that you do, in order to do that, if you wonder how you can be a caller to the program, we do it using a thing called Skype. And if you go over to gabnet.net, that's G-A-B-N-E-T dot net, uh, you'll, on the right-hand side of the page, everything you need to know about calling this program. Like, for instance, just what Sp Scott Boddicker just did. Uh, there he is. Ah, oh, yeah. Sorry. You Sorry. You can be a caller to the program. Oh, wait a minute. Something's up. You, you, you have some audio there. The there you go. You, ki the you killed it. Hey. Can't find it. Gee, Phil's fast to call in. I guess he wants to be on the show for sure before he has that heart attack. So, that, you know. Hi, Phil. Hey. How are you, fe how are you feeling today? Uh, after watching uh, go, uh, the uh, Jared Goford uh, take on Struck, I'm feeling great. You can't even get the names right, can you? Gopher. Uh, Gomer. 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 Gomer, Gomer was a fucking maniac asshole. In fact, who, who was it? One other... One other um, uh, I don't want to really get into this this early in the program, but one of the one of the people, one of the, the one of the women there said, "Are you taking your meds?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
they're sticking up for a philanderer. Hmm? They're sticking up for a philanderer. Uh, hey, SG, 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 you got to ask to be a, uh, oh, wait a minute, I see what He's the problem been. is. He's here. been. Uh, I know, but SG, uh... The problem, the, the problem with SG is, yeah, he's calling the wrong number. Uh, right, don't uh, let him in there. Well, I, you, you know, he has to ask to be, if he's going to call us on that line, he has to ask to be, be, uh, be accepted. So you have to go online, SG, right now from whatever phone you're on. And at uh, Skype, go to add contacts and then ask me to, to accept you. And I will do that. Uh, he can hear you if if he's not running the browser. Well, you know, uh, I I I could a I could answer him right now, but I'm not going to. So, yeah. you know, I've got a I've got I got a show to do. I got a show to do here. Anyway, uh, I thought Gomer was in terribly bad taste, especially in that setting. Look, SG. Let me go to SG a second and just tell him. SG, you have to ask to be made part of the, uh, be a contact off of the phone. You're calling with a different phone. Are you there, SG? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to, you've got to uh, go up to add contacts and ask to be a, a contact because uh, I can't, uh, I can't put you on uh, this way. You've got to ask to be made a contact. Okay. Okay. Bye. Uh, anyway, oh boy. You know, oh, wait I got an I got a resume call. There we go. There it's, my, we go. it's my local protest. When I, when, yeah. I, when I do that, do you two get to talk to each other? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. So what were you saying behind my back? Well, we're talking about your uh, Phil's not shaving here lately. Is not yeah. what? I just shaving. started to take a little break from shaving for a few days, and uh, I'll shave on Sunday. I don't uh, notice anything. No, well, it's, it's, it's uh, there. Uh, I noticed it. It's, Put it's, your glasses on. Uh, no. <laughs> that would only make it worse. Um, no, but anyway, I thought Gomert was uh, very unprofessional and uncongressional. Uh, and, uh, you know. You mean he wasn't a nice boy? No, to no, the no, no, no. No, he was making spur spurious remarks about, his, about this guy's personal life. That has nothing to do with the hearings. Well, uh, according to uh, the uh, the guy who was in charge, he was within his right to disparage uh, uh, Struck. Yeah, but but I uh, mean, you know, what was his name? Uh, 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 Good black. Uh, uh, Trey Trey Gowdy. Who? No, was, no, no. The, oh. the the guy who said that was the other chairman. Yeah, you're right. he's uh, the chairman. Right. Good lat. A good blat. I see. Good, good, okay. good latte. Wait a minute! I got I got Bree is calling. He's probably calling us from. Uh, uh, let's see. Add the contacts. Okay, I'll send that. I got. No, but, he's in the Philippines. He's in the Philippines. Hi, oh, hi. Yep. That's correct. Yeah. How are the roaches doing today, Bree? <laughs> uh, there's far less today. Probably one or two roach kills. Yeah. Now oh, you you sound like you're outside. So watch out for all the extraneous noise. I think he's got his mic on auto, and that's why it's picking up the noise at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you can go into your settings, on, you're using your phone, right? Yeah, it's a, it's a Russian phone. It's a Russian phone? Yeah. Ah, so it's you and Angela Merkel, huh? So when you get a pipeline, <laughs> they give you a phone, too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. I have a, a headset looking icon, a microphone icon, a plus sign, a yeah. camera with a line through it, and then the red phone. Okay, well, hit the, it, click on the microphone. What, what, it, what does it do? Well, that'll probably turn the mic off. Yeah, it'll probably turn the mic off. Yeah, that mic's to me. What about the headset? Let me see. Well, no, I, I think it's it's in your settings. Yeah. But, uh, well, I... I oh. Oh, just call us yeah, up, folks, and we'll figure out your problems by long distance. I'll tell you what. I, if it is it too loud, I'll turn no, the, no. I'll turn my mic off. It's what? fine, right? You now. can mute your mic when you don't want to talk. Okay, that'd be really helpful. Okay, okay, that would be helpful. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Here, maybe uh, he's right. coming a picture too. Yeah. Oh, hold yeah. on. There you are. Ah, there oh. we go. Turn turn, turn your 
turn the phone sideways so we get we get panorama instead of portrait (laughs) there we go there we go live and direct ladies and gentlemen from the streets of uh which town are you in again uh manila 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 yeah so what's that behind you uh that's a fence phil oh is it a residential (laughs) area yeah Yeah, i'm 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 kind of a fence to that yeah Uh, (laughs) now while you're in manila are you going to visit the envelope factory (laughs) (laughs) not on the tour not on the tour not on the tour huh Oh, okay. So, uh, where, what part of Manila are you in? And is it the is it an industrial area, residential area? Um, well, it, it's more residential, I guess. Here, I'm in a place called uh, La, uh, Las Pinas. Las Pinas. Las Pinas. <laughs> oh, Pinas. Uh, okay, Sukat. I'll just say Sukat. Okay. Yeah. And you can't manage it. So, what kind yeah, of so it's a little. It's, uh, huh? I, I, what kind of activities are you doing on this vacation, or any uh, activities? Oh, no, just doing a lot of reading and writing. Uh, I have some projects that I'm working on, and uh, the reason why I like coming here is because I can get a place to stay really cheap uh, for a month, and huh. so it's negligible in terms of the costs. And then I, you can eat cheap, or you can eat medium or expensive. The and you can get around. They have a app here. They don't have Uber, but they have something called Grab. What, and, what's Tuk-Tuk? Uh, uh, yeah, I can show you those. Uh, well, Tuk Tuk's are primarily in Thailand. Oh. Uh, they have tricycles here. But uh, excuse me, me uh, Scott. I just, uh, uh, me just Phil, Phil's this taking is, over uh, and doing tricycle. the interview. You see it? Uh, no, you, you're you see, uh, yeah. Those are tricycles. Can you see those? Yeah. Yeah. So those are tricycles. Those cost um, 20 pesos. So that's like uh, maybe 40 cents. Wow. You can go anywhere around the village. I don't want to sound uh, offbeat here, but right now from what I'm seeing, I can't think of a rattier place to take a vacation. (laughs) Oh, you know, you have no... Come on, you're from New York City, Alex. You know, the old Times Square, you you know? No. The, the old Brooklyn. Times Square doesn't have any huts in it. <laughs> How do you know? It used to. It used to, yes. It's pretty good. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, Alex, that yeah. um, uh, I have a lot of friends here yeah. uh, from my time in Singapore. And let me tell you something. If you stay in Singapore, Mm -hmm. you would learn to love the Philippines because they're more like us. They're more like Americans. Yeah. You know. um, You know something? What I'm amazed by, and and this is the height, to me it's the height of civilization, is you seem to have incredible, uh, an incredible signal. I mean, we're getting a great picture. Yeah, pretty good. We're getting a great picture. We even see a cat walking down the street there a moment ago. You know, I mean, it's really clean. That's a dog. Yeah. Oh, it was a dog? <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll, what, nigga? There's another one of those. Also, the dog, you know, the funny thing is the dogs and the cats get along here. Like, you see them side by side. Yeah. Uh, they have to because very often they're lunch. Now, aren't you married, uh, uh, a Bree? Yeah. Yeah. So is your wife with you on the vacation, or? The, uh, no, they're over in China right now. They're in China. Oh, they, oh, lucky them. Why didn't you right. go to China? Oh yeah, I'll go over. Yeah. Just give me some time, Alex. You know, yeah. can I have a week or two just to sit back and drink some coconut water and you know? I I guess, but read a book. Yeah, by the but, pool. but China's yeah. so cool. I love China. Huh? I love China. Where, where, where I'll are you? I'll get over there. I'll be in Malaysia. I'll be in China next week. I'll be in Malaysia the week after that. I'll be back in the States in August. You know. You're a world traveler, aren't you? <laughs> no. No, I'm not. Actually, I have to go to Malaysia because I have a job offer there. And... I also have one in uh, in Suzhou, which is near Shanghai. Uh-huh. But I'm probably going to have to turn that one down because the timing doesn't work. Yeah. So. 
Have we just been joined by SG? Are you there, SG? Yes. Okay, can you turn your phone or your picture on? Sure. Turn your camera on, then we can see your face from the nose up. Uh, there no, we go, Ricky. there he is. <laughs> there he is. Are you concerned about crime at all uh, in this kind of area, or it's uh, fairly crime-free? Um, you, I mean, you're always a little bit, you know? You're always a little bit concerned. But the fact is, is I don't have much. My phone is kind of an older phone. It's a Yoda phone, too. It's a Russian phone. The Yoda phone 3 has come out. I want to get that. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably only carry about, you know, 30 or $40 at any point in time uh, and one credit card. So I'm not too worried. I mean, my shoes are pretty good. Maybe they want my shoes. But, no, during the day, uh, it's, it's okay. Yeah. One of the things is that I... Technically, I shouldn't. Uh, it, it's it's not a good idea for me to hold the phone up like this to give you guys the video. Yeah. Uh, but I'm okay, I'm okay right where I am. If I were closer to the main street, I wouldn't do this. See, because my, somebody could grab it and run. My girlfriend is from the Philippines. Huh? My girlfriend's from the Philippines, and she is uh, is always having. Uh, she doesn't want me to go there because she's afraid of kidnapping, and. Uh, uh, because where does she live? Perkins. Uh, well, she lived in Manila. Where does she and, live? Um, in Manila. Wait, wait a minute. Is she afraid uh, they're going to kid? Uh, is she afraid they're going to kidnap you? No. When, wait, uh, Phil. You when you say Manila, that's uh, like you know saying okay. New York. Uh, and I want Hoboken, Queens, Brooklyn. In Evangelista. Evangelista. Um, it's uh, what? Evangelista. She says. Never, never heard of it. No. Okay. It's uh, very. You mean close An to, Angelus? No, Evangelista. Maybe she's been lying to you all these okay, years, what's, Phil. What's it near? Uh, what's I don't, it near, Phil? I don't know. I've never been there. Uh, uh, oh, so I, you don't know at all? Well, no, I know what she's told me. Uh, <laughs> you, don't, you don't know where. You don't know where your girlfriend lives, okay? Yeah. Oh, uh, but by the by the way, just in case people tuned me. in, in case people tuned in, this is the Alex Bennett program. I usually do the interviewing on this program, but oh, Phil she, is taking it on himself. Lives, she, Alex is just jealous, but uh, she lives with me in Walnut Creek, but she was born and uh, grew okay. up in the Philippines. Uh, just, just, okay. don't, just, how did she get into uh, the country? Uh, no. Just don't say. How did she get into the country? Uh, she got in before Trump became president. Uh, no, no, she came over the wall, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yes, SG. No, you were, S, wait a minute, hold on a second. SG was trying to say something here. Yeah. No, I just uh, was going to say, don't say uh, putagi namo. What does that mean? It's Tagalog. Yeah, but what does it mean? Don't be a tukma. Don't be a what? Don't be a tukma. Don't tukma? be tukma. What does that mean? Don't we all know? Uh, it means like stupid idiot. Oh, a stupid idiot. Don't we all okay. know Tagalog here? No, I can't say that I do, but I, I oh, hear oh. enough when she's talking to her sisters. Oh, oh. oh puede. <laughs> so, how long are you going to be there, Bree? Bree? Uh, I'll be here for another week and a half or so. Another week and a half. And then I, I head back to Dubai, and then uh, I, I get brought back over to Malaysia. I'd rather go to Malaysia this week or next week, but their their schedule is not working. So I have one week between my uh, Asia and U.S. Uh, deal. So mm -hmm. that one week, they're going to fly me over to KL. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, people, if you don't watch this show on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube... Uh, tonight you're missing uh, just some great uh, flavor here. I feel like uh, it's a travelogue that we're having. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, All those right. are some noises. I'm, uh, I'm gonna check off here. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get some. Uh, I'm gonna get something to eat, and I'll check back in in a little bit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's Bree. Okay, Alex. He's our friend oh, from Dubai, who right now is in I'll Manila. Be on. Oh, hey, hey, hey Alex. Yeah. Before I go, can I ask you a question? Hey, can I, uh, can you know, I? I use the Great American Broadcast app, yeah. and it, it only lets me pause and play, but it doesn't allow me to um, 
sort of skip ahead or skip back, and it doesn't let me do something else that I was going to ask that, about. Uh, I wish I could answer your question, but the point is that thing was written so long ago by a guy in another country for us. Uh, and uh, okay. I, I, and, and right. for me to, to try and change that, uh, I, I would not even know how to do it. Okay. It, it's not compatible with Russian okay. phones. He, he's talking about we do have an app for the Android phones. All right. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Call back. Yeah. Bye. That's our Call good off. friend Bree. He is from Dubai. And uh, we are now left with Phil and SG and Scott. So it's two against two. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, did, uh, if you don't remember what you uh, heard, uh, here, try this. No, the disgrace Mr. is Mr. what this man has done. The gentleman from justice. Texas will suspend for a there moment. There is the disgrace. And it won't be recaptured anytime soon because of the damage you've done to the justice system. And I've talked to FBI agents around the country. You've embarrassed them. You've embarrassed yourself. And I can't help but wonder when I see you looking there with a little smirk, how many times did you look so innocent into your wife's eye and lie to her about oh, Lisa? Mr. Oh, Chairman, this is outrageous. The credibility of a witness Shame is always on you. an Mr. issue. Mr. Chairman, you please. Have have you Mr. Know, Chairman, this is an intolerable you harassment of the witness. What is wrong with that? You need your medication. The witness. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick you out of that. You need your medication. I love that, you know. Uh, yeah. That was that was one of the most. Um, uh, it, somebody said today, and I didn't know this, that this particular committee is a committee that they put all the people on all from both sides who they don't want the donors to see. <laughs> <laughs> that the, Everybody saw this. These are these are some. This, this was a really uh, sad, sad moment. For America, this hearing. Well, on both on both sides. On both but sides. No, I mean, it, it, you know, I of course, I you know, I I feel that the Republicans. I mean, uh, 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 Trey Gowdy is just pathetic, uh, and uh, but Gomer, Gomer is that, the worst. There's nobody. No. There is no worse human being on the planet in politics well, Lee, than Lee guy. Jackson. Jackson Lee. Come on. Who's Jackson Lee? The, the African American woman from oh, California. Oh, I believe. you're talking about uh, no Barbara Lee. Barbara Lee. No Jackson. Oh, then it must be somebody else. But the California one is in my area. Jackson Barbara. Lee. Ju uh, what is it? Bar it's not Barbara Lee. Is it what? Lee Jackson. Jackson, no. Jackson Lee. I don't Jack know. I don't know. Forget yeah. it. They're all. They all suck. It's five. I watched it for nine hours. I saw it all. I yeah. I was uh, I was kind of addicted to it myself. I mean, I couldn't believe it was riveting. I couldn't I couldn't walk away. Well, part of it was that, and I I have a tr I have trouble pronouncing his name, but struck Stro struck is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, yeah. the Z is silent. I think. Yeah, uh, struck uh, uh, wasn't going to take shit from these guys, and so he was you know he was just uh, they were getting in his face, so he got in their face. He and it sounded just, robotic in his answers. No, he didn't. Not and, at all. And Not at all. And, Not at all. And smirking. Not at uh, all. Not at all. Not I at hope all. he goes down. Not at all. You know, the one thing the one thing I, I didn't hear, which I wanted to hear, was tell me about the dossier. Uh, I heard something about that. Uh, there, there was somebody that asked about it, you know, who had access to the dossier. Uh, Maybe it was a different hearing, but uh, no, 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 they talked about dossier. Uh, yeah, and, but I mean, uh, if, what, which, which part? Is, if you're an FBI person, and you know what part of the dossier do you believe to be true? He probably believed it all. No, I mean anyone. Women peeing on people and all this crap. I believe that. What part, what part do you believe to be true? Well, I believe that. Well, that's the part Alex enjoys. What part do you believe to be true based on in a, being in, in the intelligence agency? And, uh, I, anything. I believe it was made up. Of course it's made up. Yeah. Who here believes that Donald Trump would turn down three hookers free? Who? 
Who believes that? With urine. Hey, and the last hooker he was with just Three went hookers. to jail. No, the uh, last no, 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 as, as an intelligent the so, last okay, hooker the rest, of, uh, the rest I, of us can daydream yeah. about what he does as as a person. But who is it as an intelligent agency person? No, the last hooker believes, the, believes this to be true. The last yeah. hooker he was with was um, he married. Uh, <laughs> what do you what what do you you skirt the question? What? Who who believes this dossier? Any part of it to be true? Oh, I believe it. You mean all? Because you want to believe it. Every last every all, every every, every last it. word and drop of it. I I uh, I I believe. It's uh, insane. It's insane. He's a button pooping. Huh? Puppet. He's a Putin He's puppet. He's a Putin puppet. Yeah. Putin puppet. So, all right. So you're being negatively influenced by the media. And and burying your head in the sand. I don't even watch the media, leaving. Phil. I don't even leaving. watch the fucking media. The only time I watched the media was today when this thing was on. I passed it and I went, this is like the biggest train wreck I've ever if, seen. If, if you don't watch the media, then how do you tell me that I'm wrong? <laughs> you know, right, Alex, well, be, well be, I can tell you Alex. you're wrong because you, right. you don't watch the media either. You just glance over it. Uh, Alex, you're you're the smartest guy in the room, so you tell me this. I am. Right? Yes. This is a pretty so, stupid room, then. I mean, just just right now. I mean, if someone else comes in, you might not be. But you you tell me how Putin and uh, Trump, the whole thing that he drove Trump toward, you know, doing the election. You tell me the sequence of events. Well, nobody can, SG. No, I'm telling. I'm asking Alex. Fair question. Do you I'm think? asking Alex, the smartest person in the room. Wait, 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 you tell wait. me the sequence of events. I'm not telling you any sequence of events because I don't think because I don't know if there. Uh, I'm I, giving I, you. I just, that's because I that's just, not uh, because SG I, and SG 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 SG. I'm gonna hang up on you, SG, if I can't get a word in edgewise. I'm gonna hang up on you, SG, if I can't get a word in edgewise. But you won't shut up when you start talking. You won't shut up. You won't have you won't have a discussion. And unless you want to have a discussion, I don't want to talk to you. No, but SG, that it wasn't a fair question. Uh, you know, I, you know, I agree with your politics, but uh, I, I, but I also think that uh, you can't ask for that. Um, uh, you know, uh, sup, uh, for for facts that are not in evidence. And uh, you know, how how can he? How can Alex? I mean, he is the smartest guy in the room. But how could he? Uh, uh, you know, support. Uh, or state uh, those sequence of events when they're not when they're not known. He would just be surprised. And what you're doing, SG, and, and that, what oh boy, I can't talk when you you undoubtedly you can't hear me when you're talking, because you you start talking and you don't give up to other people when they want to say something. And this is a group conversation. And if I can't get you to join it as a group conversation, I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. You know. Yes, we want your opinion, but we'd like you to respect other people's and their ability to talk, too. Okay? Now, first of all, well, I think what Phil is trying to say is it's an unfair question because it isn't the question at hand. Okay? The question at hand was, did the Russians do something that tried to influence uh, our presidential race? Now, the second question was, was anybody in the Trump administration or the Trump group uh, involved in working with the Russians to this end? But that's two separate questions. Yes, it is pretty much believed by almost everyone in the government and elsewhere that the Russians uh, had something to do with, with uh, playing around with the election. As to whether they were in uh, cahoots with Trump, that's another question altogether, and I don't have the answer on that one. Okay? That makes sense to me. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And what I'm saying is, if, if people, I, I agree that there's meddling to some degree. They had ads in Facebook. 
they had a bunch of people here who did a bunch of stuff. What I'm saying is, if you believe there to be collusion, if you were to believe that to be true, how would you view that sequence of events to have happened? Well, I don't, I don't, we don't know, we don't know that the Russians haven't been working for years on meddling in our elections, and this was the first time they were able to do it to a successful result, all right? Uh, we don't know that they, we, in fact, we do know that they've been working for many, many years to get to this point. The, the Russians, and I agree with you, they have, uh, you know, they're, they're and by the, by the way. They they're didn't, great at yeah. they're great at chess. They're great at you know long term strategy. They're great at a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. and I'm just saying, based on what we know, and then people are saying there's collusion. What would you consider to be a uh, the steps that they would have taken with Trump towards this? We're, we're, but to begin with, yep. we're, 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 we're not at the point of being able to say that the Trumps, the Trump people uh, were in cahoots with the Russians in getting this done. The Russians may have just done this on their own. Uh, Thank it, you. it is strangely suspicious, however, that Trump is as positive towards Putin as he is because obviously he appreciates the help. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think he views Putin. Uh, uh, Putin, just like Kim Jong Un and others, as a as a competitor adversary. Uh huh. And, then how and, come he doesn't treat our allies in the same way? You know, he he was he had a big success today in NATO, at the NATO conference. Uh, that isn't it, a there, big, it wasn't a big success. It Phil. was major success, and he got uh, no no he uh, no. You know what he is? He's claiming no no. no, you're missing no, no what you're missing the point is, Phil. You're such a dummy when it comes to Trump. You can't see that he feeds you. He, the, he, wait a minute. His summation of when what went on, which is entirely in at odds with what okay. actually turned out to happen. Let me, let me say. In this. other words, he's the kind of guy who says. Uh, 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 I, uh, the economy is the greatest it's ever been ever since I've taken office. And short sighted on it, this. It, no, I'm uh, not short sighted on it. Let, even let they, me, even they said he was full this. of crap when he said that he got anything out of this. May's out. She's she's going to be out in a couple Who's of days. Who's going to be out? May. Uh, it, well, she's uh, leaving. Uh, she's she, is she leaving office or is she uh, voted with Congress? Uh, they just they they uh, uh, her um, her secretary guy uh, quit. Uh, uh, the the guy who, uh, who was in charge, I guess, of Brexit. Yeah, what's his and, name? Uh, 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 Boris. Yeah, Boris. Uh, the, with the hair. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the new the guy. Former this, mayor, uh, the former mayor. Former former mayor of London. No, he's not. He, he was the former mayor he, of London. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now the, there's a new guy with the uh, uh, named Hunt that has uh, I really think is thinking straight and and so forth. But let me just finish my point. Uh, or make my point on this Putin thing. Now, what Trump has done by rallying and getting all this extra uh, support in NATO is now he's going to be meeting with Putin with the strength of of a success in getting the NATO countries to, uh, really to meet their Putin? obligation. Do you really oh, think no. Putin <laughs> believes that he's been successful at this? I, uh, absolutely. Hunt Hunt, the, uh, uh, the, the guy who's, um, uh, I, I forgot his position. He had the same position he, as Boris. Well, you're pulling this uh, shit out of your ass. No, I, I'm not pulling it out of my ass. He has the same position. He said Trump Wait was a minute. Oh, they already pulled something out of your ass. I'm sorry. Ah, it's prostate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they took it through my stomach. But. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh. They took your brain out through your ass. Well, anyway, anyway, go ahead. It, it, it put Trump in a very powerful, uh, much more powerful position to negotiate with, uh, oh, with Putin. Putin. Putin is going to just sucker him like you've never seen in your life. We'll see. And he's going to come away saying, we had the most wonderful meeting and it's going to be better for the world and I was successful at this. And I, but he, what he does is he supplies you with a scenario of what he wants you to believe happened when in fact that isn't what happened. Kevin... You kept you thank thank you for uh, who's, wrong? S, S, uh, who's wrong? Who's wrong? S G me or him? 
No, the the uh, the the Secretary General of NATO this morning on CNN was was interviewed by Amanapur, what whatever her Christiane name is. Christiane Amanapur. Thank you. And uh, he she tried several times to say how horrible it was. And what he does, and he's from Norway, he's Norwegian, and he said several times, okay, Trump's style is different, he's direct, this has made us stronger. This is exactly what he said. Well, and well, yeah, but in what but way is it NATO, made? NATO, NATO is about to have almost $40 billion more that is coming to that whole area, and then they sign this deal that is has been more um, is stronger than uh, the past administrations toward Russia. So you can't say that, I mean, we might think, oh, he's a dick. But look, I mean, in the end, what they have done is created a stronger NATO. And it's, it's, it's and the, the, the leader of NATO is saying this. So you Not agree? Me. You agree with me that? Of course, Trump, he agrees with you. Trump is in a stronger position to negotiate uh, 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 Crimea and a, no a number of other things, uh, and uh, uh, Iran, by the, by the uh, way. Israel, Syria. Uh, there, uh, you know, there's a lot that they have to talk about. By the way, in case people wonder whether this show gets stacked because the host happens to be a lefty, look at us. We're three and three here. The three Republicans and three to the left. Yes, but if Trump gets his uh, nominee in, uh, we'll, uh, we'll be a little more stacked to the right. I see. Okay. Uh, uh, Patrick, <laughs> you've been listening to this. Any comments? Did you see any of this uh, hearing today? Yeah, there was a Democrat that I had to wrap up because it seemed like he didn't even know where he was at. Because uh, he went on a rant and said... We're not talking about the children. We're not talking about Social Security. We're not talking about education. We're not talking about this. We're not talking about that. And I'm thinking to myself, you do realize this is a hearing on that FBI clown that was putting out tweets that are just as bad as what Trump has done, right? And he just kept rattling on. Uh, no, no. Uh, to begin with, to begin with, you're you're wrong, Patrick. It, well, they weren't tweets. They weren't tweets. Oh, uh, they. Well, they were. They were text. Messages. They were text messages between he and his girlfriend at the time. They both start with a T. <laughs> but, but he seemed like he was on the wrong page of what the hell they were discussing because as soon as they got to him, he apologized for how he was being treated, and I thought. Well, this is a hearing, and they are trying to get information, and he did seem to try to pull a Ronald Reagan on everything, which was, I don't recall, or I can't comment, I don't re And then whoever the chairman was was saying, we got permission from the FBI for your dumbass to answer these questions. And then, like I said, they went to some Democrat who was going off on the Cade children, and education and all it is and i'm like what the fuck and then i turned it off because oh, wait, I thought, wait, wait, wait a minute I, 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 you, you didn't pay attention to the asshole republicans on that on that panel like uh, trey gowdy and uh, uh gomert and uh I, huh when i saw the republican i enjoyed because that's what that's supposed to be an adversarial thing no 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 but it was when gomert yeah. suddenly brought in the personal thing about uh about this guy's wife who he had cheated on with this woman i mean that's just you know uh, what is what is this tmz but i have the email was he not did he not have a girlfriend while he was doing the emailing yes what? the investigation she yes, was part but, of the but you don't but, but you don't it's something like that is totally uncalled for totally uncalled for it has nothing to do with the hearings has nothing to do with anything it didn't have anything to do with the wall either according to that democrat but uh you, you know i think you like that uh, uh lisa page she looks like she's your type you know uh, i haven't I even saw, seen a picture of her 
Well, I saw a more becoming picture of her, and she was pretty. But, uh, you know, just the, the pictures that they show. Well, now, is that how you judge a woman, is by their looks? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Um, you're, you're right. That may not have been appropriate for what they were discussing, but neither was what that idiot Democrat brought up either. And the thing is, I'll quote Jack Bishop, or paraphrase so I don't get in trouble because I don't remember exactly how he put it, but basically with politics, everybody gets down in the, in the mud and the blood and, and the beer and everything else. That's what that is. So the all fair in love and war and all fair in politics. And, you know, the way that struck was obstructing everything and kept doing a Reagan he reminded me of Ronald Reagan during the Iran conference. Yeah. I don't recall. I can't recall. I don't recall. I don't recall. The guy kept stymieing everything. He well, had plus, if he's going to start yelling. I, I, what I enjoyed, I, you know, I enjoyed what I saw. But then as soon as the Democrats started going off the page uh, that it wasn't even part of the hearing, I yeah. just shut it off. I had better things to do. Yeah. But I mean, it, 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 I thought that as a uh, proceeding in the Congress of the United States went, it was embarrassing. It was just one embarrassing. Thing I got to say about Strzok, he's one tough dude. You know, I mean, they came at him with, with oh, everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, if I was in a trench, I would want Strzok. Here's the thing <laughs> is, I'll tell you where Strzok went wrong. Here's what I would have done with Trey Gowdy. Who the hell do you think you are? You know, talk to me in a more civil tone and don't try and lecture me and I'll be happy to answer your questions. But if you're going to have this snotty approach to me, you can go off a short pier. That's because he was guilty. There wasn't a guilt or innocence in this whole thing. He, he said ex exactly what he did and he owned up to everything he did. Guilt, yes, guilty Patrick. of what? Guilty of what? Yeah, guilty of, uh, of, uh, of, for what, of fixing Phil? the Phil, outcome Phil. of uh, the investigation. Oh, fixing the outcome of the investigation. To the investigator yeah. general, yeah. he was not guilty. Wait no, a because the Wait investigator general. Hold on a second, Phil. 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 Phil, 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 Phil the what? What, what, what was the, What was the outcome of that investigation? Uh, it was fixed by Strzok. No, he wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is the he outcome? The wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Now, but, but what, no, uh, hold on a second, Phil. I'm asking you a question. What did he obstruct? What did he, what did he obstruct? He changed the, um, uh, the, uh, the wording of, uh, the Hillary, uh, no, uh, no, 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 Phil. no, he Phil. Said was, no, he, uh, instead he, of saying it was one thing, he said it was another, which didn't carry Phil, a penalty. Uh, the fact is he couldn't obstruct anything because we don't know what the outcome is and, yet. And kept blaming the but people. But we don't know. We don't, him. we don't know what the outcome is yet, Phil. Well, now the IG's are, are investigator you, are, are had, a meeting, you? had a meeting, according to uh, that testimony that I uh, recorded, uh, had a meeting with uh, Strzok, at which Strzok says he doesn't remember the meeting. And in that meeting, they told him that there was an anomaly in Hillary's email server and that her server was hacked and all but four out of 30,000 emails went to a uh, offshore uh, uh, an, an, an offshore uh, uh, per, uh, emails, uh, you know, they got her emails, 30,000 of them. So, so how is that Hillary's fault? It's because she wasn't supposed to use a, a, an unprotected server. She used, the un, she used her own private server for private emails. No, because it was 30,000 emails that were not private emails, that were government emails that they found uh, and and uh, on the, on those she and, on those and, she used uh, the State uh, Department struck, email, right? It struck did nothing uh, about it. He he just shook the guy's hand and sent him out of the room. Hey, Struck isn't the only guy at the FBI. He is not the final word he at the FBI. Oh, hold on a second. There are a lot of people watching him and him watching them, and you know, uh, it Struck. It, I'm it, to begin with. Did anybody ask in this hearing to Struck? Uh, what is your uh, what is your political affiliation? Well, obviously, uh, no, it was, no, it was no, but no, no, no. Obviously, we don't know. We don't know that Strzok isn't a Republican. 
uh, you should have read his email. Did, did he, uh, uh, Scott? I did not hear the question that they asked him if he was a Democrat or a Republican. Yeah, they did it, not hear it. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh, for all we know, Strzok could be a, a Republican. No, nah, because he said that these were his private uh, hyperbole. Uh, yes, and, but they were his opinions about Trump. I know a lot of Republicans who can't stand Trump. I think Patrick's one of them. Well, he's probably coming yeah, around. Yeah, Patrick, you got your hand up. I, I want to say, I want to go back to Trey Gowdy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he's human. I think he's a vampire. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't trust anything that fucker said ever. I wouldn't want him nominated for anything. I, I'm glad. I believe he's leaving. He's leaving, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And he should go back to, yes, it, exactly. He should go back to his coffin in Transylvania yeah. and state. Because that is the one person in Congress that just looking at him gives me the heebie fucking jeep. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> but you know, the thing is that I, I looked at him and I, and I was getting very mad at him because he wasn't, he would be asked, he would ask a question of this guy, and then when the guy started to answer, he'd start interrupting him. Sounds like Gabnet. <laughs> oh, come on. Most of the time, I sit back and let you blab your ass off. Yeah, Kevin, you haven't said anything. Jump in here. Oh, uh, you're muted, Kevin. You're, you're muted, Kevin. Uh, he's yeah. got no mic. <laughs> he's listening and watching. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's a player. He's just... Watching us, Kevin? He's just a looky loo. Yeah, you perv. Yes, Santa's a voyeur. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, you know, I, 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 Gowdy, I think was just abominable, just abominable. And yeah. Gomert, I thought, was way out of line. And then the way they were running the hearing, it was like the the chairman of the of the of the committee uh, mm -hmm. was constantly making rulings, which he wasn't empowered to make and they had to then point out to him that well you ha can't do that without a vote and you can't do that and you can't do this wrong uh -huh. here we go sg <laughs> yes sg like yes sg uh, no it was wrong what, what was, you what, just said was wrong what was wrong oh, you're talking about the chairman you're talking about go black no uh, there was an was it Goldblatt? Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. Good, good, good lad. Good lad. Good, good lad. Good lad. Goldblatt. <laughs> um, bad, bad bladder. I don't know. Goldblatt. Uh, it's a guy whose uh, his name started with a K and had a lot of uh, uh, consonants. Um, and he was, uh, during that uh, um, Gomert uh, inter uh, questioning, uh, was saying that the guy was out of line and that you can't attack personally and so forth. And uh, uh, Gomert seemed to know more about the rules than the guy with all the consonants. Absolutely. What were those consonants? Asia and Europe? No. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it was a bunch of O's and V's and things. O's you know? and no, V's. That's, yeah. No, Phil, I, uh, I noticed that too. Yeah. He knew, the, so he knew, the, he knew the rules. Uh, uh, more than the other people who are saying that you can't do that. Right. Don't yeah. But I mean, it, it just, and then there was that one point where they couldn't, it, they said, uh, all those in favor say aye and aye and uh, all those against say nay. And you really couldn't tell which side had the most v vocal response. And he says, the eyes have it. I mean, just without thinking about it. And then somebody said, well, I, let's take a vote on this. You know, and and he was right in the end. The the his his side won, but uh, it it just was, it was just how how he did. And I've seen that happen before when they go all in favor say aye, all in again say nay. What happened to uh, we lost Scott? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't be mad. <laughs> I think yeah. he just uh, uh, hit the button. Well, he'll. I'm sure he'll yeah. call back. He'll uh, 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 so I mean. Uh, I've seen that happen before, and I just, you know, I, it's like, yeah, here comes Scott. It's like they hey, Alex, you're surrounded. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, right, quick. I need Kevin. Call, calls back, Kevin. 
calls back <laughs> uh, Scott's there. Okay. I hit the wrong button. Yeah. One didn't mute my this mic, is, but I th- hit the This is the first time up. we've ever been ganged up on in this case, uh, sure. uh, Scott. There are three Republicans here, and you and I. Yeah, but they only have half a brain, so... Yeah, we, we can take them on. Okay. We can take them. There we go. There's the elf on the shelf. Um, anyway. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know. What, what's happening? I, I'm, it's all so boring. I don't care anymore. You know, like the other day when this uh, doctor asked me who the governor of New York was, and I didn't know, you know. Uh, uh, and I was so embarrassed by, by not knowing, but then I said to myself, I don't give a shit about local politics. I don't give a shit about who the governor is. You, know? you should have said Rockefeller, and then they would have uh, asked you if you needed your meds. Uh, well, no, it, I, th- I think the opposite is true, Alex. We should care more about our local politics and less about national politics because probably. But I, have, if, if I'm doing a show here, I can't do a local politics show because I'm going out. No, to I know, country. but I'm saying, I'm but, not 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 for this show, but I'm saying in general John, that <laughs> that we have more to you know for our local mayors, for our local council people, for our local whatever. Because in the end, th- this whole national stuff. It's just become bizarre. You know, the funny thing is I learned more about Texas politics because of Jack and Amy than, uh, you know, I have I, I never had any knowledge of uh, uh, Texas politics. And, and now, I, I you know, I have a more of an insight. Well, I still don't give a shit about Texas politics. Anyway, Patrick, <laughs> you know, yes, Patrick, you had your hand up. Oh, there we go. Um. I, I think that that uh, 28-year-old chick that beat the 20-year... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a good example of local politics. Oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've been harping on you about that for years now, Alec, where you've said you don't give a shit, and there's a perfect example where well, local uh, politics matter. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you know, you're, I, I mean, Patrick, I can't, I can't argue with you. You're absolutely correct on that, you know. Uh, and it is, like in Wisconsin, we were able to, because of the local politic and the state politic, be able to hold off some of what Obama was doing nationally because it was state uh, laws and, and state rights. So that's where states come in and local politics. So that you can, you don't have to go with everything nationally, and yeah. it affects you more when it's locally. And look at the look at the people you have in your background, by a backyard. You got Schumer. You got uh, uh, a Gil, Gilderbrand or whatever her Gilderbrand. name is. Uh, well, well, I, thank you so much for reminding me of that. I feel so much better now. <laughs> uh, uh, you Hey, I'm in no better shape with Feinstein and 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 Pelosi, you know, and Barbara Lee. Yeah, Barbara Lee. Bar, 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 Barbara Lee. Oh yeah, Sh- Schumer did the uh, airplane. He was called that a flight attendant a bitch. Really? Uh, when was that? It's like uh, a day or two ago. Oh. He he, he was. Uh, they were flying on a, on something. Uh, a plane and and uh, they're on their cell phones, and she said, "Could you please get off your cell phones?" And then he, she said to them, "We can't leave until you get off your cell phone, and then uh, we can't close, we can't you know take off or whatever." And then so he says, "Bitch, <laughs> isn't that terrible? He's got to fly commercial." You know, he wants to win the House and the Senate so that you know he can he can get the private plane back. That, that's what it's all about. You know. Can I make this one more call? He never had a private plane before. Uh, well, Pelosi, when she became Speaker well, yeah, but, of the but House, but he, but he's not, he's not, uh, he's not the. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, you know they want to be the ones that take advantage. Of of all the perks, you know, they were pissed at uh, uh, who's the guy that just resigned? Uh, uh, Pruitt. Pruitt. They were pissed at Pruitt because he was getting all the perks. So you know, they had watchdogs out there making sure Phil, that he Phil, was Phil, Phil, he was taking money out of your fucking pocket. Okay. 
you know. Yeah, but he did that you know. sound booth. Huh? And, and oh, he, he needed, needed the sound, sound booth, really? Yeah, $43,000. Now, if I can just buy that yeah. on the government yeah. surplus let me, let site. Me, let me say, did you pay $43,000 last year in taxes? I mean, in personal taxes? Almost. Almost. Uh, half of that. Well, then you paid for half of that phone booth. Well, okay. you know, so that's where this is wrong and where it's terrible. OK, yeah. and you know what I think? I mean, I I think that uh, while I, I want senators and congressmen to get paid, because if we made it a job that you have to do for free, then only rich people would go after the jobs because the poor people couldn't afford to. But oh, yeah. uh, but I think that we should lower the pay of senators and congressmen. It should be a basic level paying job what while you're going no scott no i think they i think they should pay them so much that they wouldn't need money from uh, no. uh expensive donors i and think donors. they should pay them based on them showing up to work so if you don't show up you don't get paid you show up you get paid and you know these most of these guys work 14 days a year and uh you know, they're, they're always absent. They're not doing anything. Phil, they're and they, they work a little more than 14 days a year. Uh, even when they're there, they're not working. But, uh, you know, they should be they should have to clock Listen, in. Listen, I know guys. I know guys at Hollywood movie studios who work uh, three hours a year. You well, know, between, you know, that's between the lunches sister. and the taking this and going there and so on and so forth. There's three hours. They actually work. So, well, yeah. that's the private sector. You know, that's Wait, different. Who, who, who's the most famous person, you know, Alex? Who's the most famous person I've known? Me. <laughs> that shows you that's how sad. few. Uh, uh, yeah, the sad. No. That's the, it's the, that's the most famous person you touched intimately. Oh, uh, you you've been on TV. I, so. I would say you know I mean most of them are dead. I mean, huh? Well, John Lennon. John Lennon. I'd say probably John Lennon was the most famous yeah, he's person all over the world that I knew. Okay. That he knew. You know, I've I've interviewed people just as famous. I mean, I've I've, I've you know I've, I've interviewed Jimmy Carter on two occasions. Oh, uh, really? You know, uh, how's that? He was fine. He's a lovely man, lovely man. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would say John Lennon probably was the most famous person I ever I ever knew. Okay. Uh, what did what did he, what did he say to you? What do you mean? What he said to me? He said a lot of stuff. We, uh, I knew him. We hung out and uh, with various yeah, groups. Yeah, tell us about it. Smoked dope with him. Actually, I, uh, actually, <laughs> up the check. Actually, um, I actually had liked Yoko better. Uh, I mean, it, 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 she she always appeared to me to be much smarter than John was. John was a people. People think, oh, he wrote all that great music. He had to be really you know, a, a mental giant. And the fact is, he was a, he, he can be a savant and write great lyrics, okay? Um, I, I found him to be a little on the naive side. I found him to be a little, you know, uh, uh, um, thick. Uh, but I found her to be extremely intelligent. She's, and she's extremely, a great businesswoman. Huh? With a lot, uh, Yoko's a great businesswoman with a lot of insight. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah, also, yeah. Uh, you know, but, but I, but I, but I found her, I found her engaging. I could have a really nice discussion with her. You know, John well, was, yeah. John was not really somebody who, who was very verbose. So but, but wasn't he interested in her through her arts and you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you ever go out to dinner or you know, uh, out to a restaurant with them? No. Or. No, no, no. All right. So we don't know who would have picked up the check. No, no. But but. Uh, well. And I probably would have. I always picked up the check. What did he tell you about Yoko? I mean, I'm interested in that. Well, I'll tell you one thing about her. Everybody went, "How? how what does he see in her, boy? And she's oh, so ugly, or whatever." I got to yeah. tell you, you get within three feet of Yoko, you want to jump her. <laughs> I mean, really, there was something about her. There was some kind of magic that she possessed that made yeah. her absolutely sexy i'm sure uh, you know very very well ver huh <laughs> what screamed well she screamed well yeah yeah i'd like to hear that <laughs> uh, maybe that's how she got her name Yo i said something that john um 
came back in later years and remembered. And then when she did that album where she was doing all that screaming and everything, I yeah. said, someday yeah. everybody will be doing this. Yeah. Uh, that she's, she's ahead of her time. If she, and sure enough, we got into a period of music where the kind of thing she was doing became the thing everybody was doing. And John yeah. said, Alex Bennett knew it before everybody else. You know, uh, and, and I always felt that what she was, I understood what she was doing, you know, and nobody else could. I, they thought I was crazy, you know, but uh, what the hell. And, and uh, she, she saw the Renaissance in Brooklyn and started buying and restoring uh, apartment buildings and, and, and brownstones and, and, and wait, so forth. Well, you know, she was the daughter of years, she, years ago. She was the daughter of a banker. So she yeah. knew the whole world of finance and everything before she ever went into art. Uh, and uh, she may have even studied for it. Uh, yeah. But she was a, she's an amazing woman. Uh, and uh, um, I was going to interview her when I was at Sirius XM, but somehow her people were dealing with me, not her. Uh, she probably didn't even know they were talking to me about her being on the show. And then they were putting all kinds of caveats on the discussion. You can't talk about this. You can talk about that. And I went, then we're not going to do it. You know, and I turned it down. And everybody said, did you turn down Yoko? No, I said, I, you know, I knew if I got Yoko in a room, I could talk about anything with her because she knew me and, and she liked me. Okay. But having her people dictate ahead of time what she'd talk about and not talk about. And since we had a history together with John, I wanted to get into some of that. You know, uh, and uh, I w it wasn't going to be embarrassing or anything else, but, you know, I was, what, what I'm going to do, uh, she wanted to do a, 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 an interview about some, I don't know, maybe some recording she came out with or some book she came out with that had nothing to do with John, had nothing to do with her history. Uh -huh. And, and it, to me, it's stupid that you bring her into a room and then you don't ask her about her life with John, you know? How long, oh, how long ago was that? That was about, well, I mean, I haven't been serious for five years, so that was about six or seven years ago. Could it have been when she was uh, doing the, uh, her son uh, and she no. had created no. a bunch of art that no. ended up in, no. Uh, no. Like, on tour like the San Francisco no. Museum of Modern no. Art? No, I said a, no, uh, Phil! Right, because she was pushing. I said was no. I said right. no. But that uh, was one of the things about that time that she was touring and and doing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I, so uh, but, uh, you know, but uh, and then I'm trying. Uh, somebody else I was thinking of when you were saying the most famous person. Uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you, uh, and I, I'll name a famous what I, who I consider one of the most famous people I ever uh, interviewed. Uh, and you're going to go what? Who? Uh, John Scopes. Oh, is that the famous case? Uh, Scopes uh, was Monkey Trial. Thing? The Scopes yeah. Monkey Trial. He was the guy who was on trial in the Scopes Monkey Trial mm. for mm. teaching evolution in school. It was a big case in Tennessee. And uh, everybody talked about the Scopes Monkey Trial. And then one day I got to meet John Scopes. And he came on my show and we got to know him. Actually, my uh, ex-wife Ronnie got to know him probably even better than I did. And, uh, uh, but that, uh, to me, that's very famous because he's historical, yeah. you know, and it's not often you meet up with history. Um, and, and he was a very historical. I'm trying to think, is, it, it, there got to be some other people I could name, you know, uh, you know, the people I was impressed by meeting, Tennessee Williams, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, but uh, as so far as famous people are concerned, yeah, I've known a lot of famous people but not on the level of, say, John Lennon or, you know. And what we're talking about is mythic at this point. When I'm talking about John Lennon and John Scopes, you know, I'm talking about m m being mythic. Um, but, uh, yeah, who was the most famous? Oh, Marilyn Chambers. Yeah, she was the most famous person I ever interviewed. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, you know. Um, but Maybe Stormy it, Daniels next. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I would want to interview Stormy Daniels. Get a jailhouse interview. Huh? A jailhouse interview. Are they going to put her with Manafort? 
she's not going to jail. They dropped the case. They dropped the case because there was no case there. Mm-hmm. It says, the law says, she was, in case people don't know, she, in, she was in uh, Cleveland, was it, I think? Touched her. Yes. And they touched her. And, and they touched her, and I know she rubbed her tits in a guy's face or something, and they arrested her because uh, she wasn't allowed to touch the customers. Well, they went and looked at the law. What the law read is that anyone who regularly works at a place in Cleveland cannot oh, wow. touch the uh, patrons. She doesn't regularly work at this club. She was only doing two nights, and then she's out of town. So she, so because of that, the district attorney said, "Can't we can't charge her with this? She doesn't regularly work at this club." Sure. Yeah. So, so but, uh, you know, mean, but the real story there though was there was some women there wanted to get a close-up picture with her boobs next to them. Yeah. And they took some pictures, and then they said they dismissed the case. Oh yeah, I mean it. It it it, it, it didn't it didn't look good. It didn't pass the smell test, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now I'm not and I'm not saying that she smells, but then again, I. Of you know, course not. Yeah. Um, it just so happened the cops were there that night, right? It, it, yeah, they had two cops sitting there, and by the way, there were other women on that night. Who had touched customers, but they didn't. St- they didn't arrest them didn't until smell. Stormy Daniels right. did it. Then they arrested her and the other two. Yeah, they weren't stinky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oof. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, uh, oh, well, Jack Nicholson, I you know interviewed. He he's, I think legendary status you don't hear from him lately no there are a couple of people i think are on the on the way to the uh to god's waiting room promised land uh no uh um um, sean connery we haven't heard from in a long time he's still alive alive? he's still alive yeah and we haven't heard from uh, jack nicholson in a long long time you know, and what usually happens is they start getting diminished capacities or whatever, and you know, just they disappear. I mean, you, we used to see him what at, at Lakers games all the time and stuff like mm-hmm. that. He was a big fan of the Lakers, or in the front row of the Academy Awards. Did you ever? Were you ever a fan of George Lopez? Did you see I, that? Yeah, George, uh, I do knew recent George. Recent video. Well, George, I've known for years. Uh, that, that video of him uh, peeing on uh, Trump's uh, star. Well, he, he uh, here. This is this, this shows you how people go crazy. It it what it was what, a water bottle. What Lopez right? did was he took a water bottle and he put it in his fly, and then he stood right. over Trump's star, and then it looked like he was peeing on it. Right. And yes. everybody's getting apoplectic. They're calling up the police department. Arrest George Lopez for peeing on Trump's <laughs> star. And what I'm suggesting now is he started the whole movement. What you do is you don't want to get arrested for pulling your penis out on Hollywood Boulevard. So pee in a jar and then go over to the star and pour your urine on it. (laughs) I'll have a notch out of that. And, of course, you heard the whole thing with Sarah Palin. We mentioned this last night, Sasha Baron Cohen. And how he made her think that he was a vet in a wheelchair. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, were some other people duped? Uh, Stuttering John. Uh, who? Stuttering John did Trump. Um, yeah, no, but there was another. There was another dupe uh, thing that I, I read, uh, and I don't know if it was Cone or uh, somebody else. I, I can't find it. I'm looking for it. Really? I'm saying John John Melendez. Stuttering John got Trump on the phone. <laughs> Yeah, and he was he was uh, saying he was Menendez, the, yeah, the guy from New York, yeah, New, and, Jersey. No, New Jersey, no Jersey, and 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 he was Jersey. and Trump was very uh, cordial to who he thought was a Democrat, Menendez. I, I thought the conversation uh, showed no, the, the, no. The, the reason tr- the reason <laughs> Phil, the reason he was cordial to him when he thought he was Menendez is because he knows Menendez. They've been friends for years. Yeah. So that's the reason why he was cordial to him. And, and he couldn't tell it wasn't the real Menendez? I guess not. I guess oh. it's on the phone, plus Trump's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a genius. 
genius. The way no, the He's a way, stable genius. No, yeah. the way you the way that you can uh, uh, <laughs> it, 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 it make you know really get it, get along with Trump is you just simply flatter him. Yeah, you, I, you flatter you, him, and immediately is all over you. What? What's what's the deal with the Pew Research Center? Is that uh, one that you have any respect for? Yeah. Uh, no, they left out the they left out the K. Uh, yeah, but uh, they're saying that uh, Trump's popularity is as popular as Obama was in the middle of his first term, and uh, this is according to the Pew uh, Research Center. Yeah. So. And, well, uh, hey, listen, that, listen, uh, America. And Trump uh, popularity amongst Republicans who is Who gives a shit? Who gives a fucking shit? 85%. I don't care. I wouldn't, ca I wouldn't care if 99% of America <laughs> loved Donald Trump, which is, you know, in this a, a, a asshole of a country now is entirely within reason. Listen, uh, and, and I'm still going to think he's a puking fucking motherfucking <laughs> yeah, asshole. Hey, Congress has a 19% approval rating, too. Yeah, the midterms are coming, and this is going to be the first uh, one. Nineteen percent, woohoo! And, and this is going to be one of the first well, times. What, that what, 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 wait, what, what is? Don't what, take back the house. What is his? What is his current? Uh, what is his current uh, polling number? Uh, well, amongst uh, just not 19, amongst uh, Republicans, among the public. Uh, okay, that means I have to read the whole article. Oh, I see. Okay. So, uh, in other words, would you read the beginning of the article so we can see that you're even correct on any of this? Because, you know, you have a tendency to scan and get the facts wrong. Okay, a poll found that a polarity of Americans... Wait a, minute, a, a poll? A poll? The Pew Research Does Center. Does it say? No, it says a poll. You said a poll. A new poll found. A, a Pew poll found. Yeah. Yes. Of Americans say that President Barack Obama was the first or second best president in their lifetime. 31% of Americans lauded Obama as the best president ever, according to Pew Research. While another 13% that he said that he he was the second best. Just over 2,000 people were polled for this survey and asked wait to minute, choose. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This had nothing to do with po his popularity at the moment. This had to do with who was the most uh, the best president ever. Well, you you asked me to uh, to read the first paragraph. Well, because you know you when you came here, when you came on here a few moments ago, and I think SG will even back me on this. You yeah. said that his the Pew Research said that his poll numbers are higher than Barack Obama's oh. were at this time of Barack Obama's term. And the point of it the fact says, is that's not what it says at it all. Says, it, it says right here. Uh, Trump is as popular as Obama was in the middle of his first presidential term. So yeah, and I'm then looking for the number. But, you know, you asked me to read the first paragraph, which I did, and now I'm looking for the number. Uh, right now they're, they're saying what the poll was made of, the ages of the people, and, and so forth. Um, and uh, so I'll find it. No, well, you'll uh, find I'll, it. Eventually you'll get the news to us in some way, shape, or form. Don't ever talk to me about you, fake news again, Phil. It's not fake news. It's, I asked you if the Pew Research Center, uh, and this is uh, McCatch, McClatchy. McC DC uh, gee, you can't, uh, you can't even read. McClatchy. McClatchy. All right. Well, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's uh, who put it out, and they're quoting the uh, Pew Research Center. Hmm. So... I'll read a little further, and I'll get back to you with let's, your let's, answer. Let's really get to yelling more, because we've had the highest numbers tonight we've had in months really? watching this. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you ought to go Republican. Yeah, no, no <laughs> that, that isn't the point. That isn't the point. Um, but it's, uh, you know, uh, and of course, we're, we're going to hear on uh, Tuesday, Trump is going to say what a successful meeting he had with uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, -huh. uh, you know, you mean the boss? Is he going to get? He's he's going he's going to Moscow to get his uh, his. Uh, what do they do at war at jobs where they uh, once a year they assess how what kind of a job you've done? A review. He's, go, he's review, going he's yeah. going to he's going to talk to P Putin and get his review his yearly his performance review. review his yeah. performance review <laughs> exactly. 
So uh, listen, Patrick, this uh, this uh, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen put himself in a wheelchair. And, and by the way, Sarah Palin referred to it as a fake real ch wheelchair. And now there is no such thing as a fake wheelchair. It's either a wheelchair or it isn't a wheelchair. Am I right, Patrick? Yeah. The only thing that could be considered a fake wheelchair is if some kid made one out of cardboard in middle school for a project, but yeah, it's either a wheelchair yeah, yeah. or it's not. So he, it was a fake, he had he was a fake cripple. That's that's what the deal was. Well, it's not that the wheelchair was fake. It was that he was a fake in a wheelchair. But she said it was a fake wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I also mispronounce a lot of things too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So anyway, uh, that was that was the. Um, uh, uh, that was very funny because they they also took her to the wrong airport so she couldn't get back on her flight in time. <laughs> she should have used Uber. Yeah, uh, and and you can uh, see Alaska from my back porch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, gee, why wouldn't she? She should just go away, and just disappear. <laughs> you know, she took. You know, I I I. I you know, of all the Republicans, the one I had the most respect for was John McCain. I always considered him a decent person. And that, him having to go get Sarah Palin as a, as a, as a running mate was just the saddest thing I've ever seen someone have to do in politics. And that's when he kind of lost me. You know? He gave up a month before the election. Yeah, just like Hillary he did. Uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 Patrick. You said you wish she'd go away. Well, Sasha brought her back. I mean, I hadn't heard from her in years. So the fact that she's out there is his fault. So yeah. go bitch at him. She's on the speaker's circuit. By, by and the that's way, how they got hold of her. Every, every now and then, somebody comes up with a, um, with a quote by Yogi Berra. As we all know, Yogi Berra was known to make quotes which made no sense at all or contradicted themselves. And I heard one the other way that I just loved. He said, nobody goes there anymore because there are too many people. <laughs> now, wasn't he the spokesman for Dan and Yogurt? No. He, now, there's another famous person I met. Yeah. I had, uh, I went to a, uh, it was, um, what was the, what was the, it was the chocolates, the Yoohoo. Yoohoo, yeah. Yeah. And I oh. went to a, a Yoohoo lunch. And oh, it was Yoohoo, not Dannon. Yeah, with uh, with Yogi Berra. Yeah. And uh, we were uh, sitting at the table together, chatting, you know. Uh, but I got to talk to the guy who invented Yoohoo. Now, does anybody yeah. knew, know what Yoohoo Do you all know what Yoohoo is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the colored water. Well, well, I'm glad you yeah. know what Yoohoo is because nobody else does. Okay. Yeah. Um, but it's it's some kind of brown substance in a bottle Shopping. that yeah, you yeah. drink and uh, go, you Colon cleanser. <laughs> well, I am sitting across from the guy who invented <laughs> you -Hoo. You want to talk about the most famous person I ever met? The guy who invented you -Hoo. Okay. Uh, and I said to him, so how did you uh, invent this? He said, well, we were looking for a product that you could take like a chocolate drink that you could put in a bottle and then you could bury it for a hundred years in the Sahara <laughs> Desert. And when you took it out of the sand and opened it up, it would taste as good as the day it went in the bottle. And, and you I, could eat it with a Twinkie. And I, I looked at him and I said, good, uh, the first day it was in the are bottle. Are you gonna finish, let me finish the story, Phil? Yeah, okay. You ruined my timing now. I'm not going to finish the story. You're not going to uh, get a funny punchline. So, well, then don't finish it. I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. <laughs> okay, go right ahead. All right. Uh, when I was 13 years old. No, no, no. you got to finish my story. Uh, uh, that, no, you got to finish So he said story. to me, we, we, wanted to a, we want to be able to bury it in the Sahara Desert for 100 years. When you pick it up, out, it will be just as fresh as the day it was put in, in, the, in the sand. Right. And I said to him, go ahead, finish the story. 
Uh, I don't remember what you said to him. Uh, I was going to tell you a you who story. What do you mean but, you didn't uh, remember what I said to him? You wanted to finish the story for me, so go ahead and finish the story. Uh, what I what finish did I finish the story for well, you? Well, I looked at him. I looked across the table, and I said, what the fuck is in this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, when uh, I was 13, one of my bar mitzvah gifts from my parents was a... Uh, was a, a, a little uh, boat, they call it a dinghy, with a five horsepower engine, and we called it the Yuhu. My father wrote to the Yuhu company, and they sent us stickers, Yuhu stickers, uh, that we could put on the transom of the boat. So, uh, so that. Boy, this my... is the story I've been waiting all my life to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've always had an Thank God I made it to 78, and I finally got to hear this story. I, hey, I've always had an affection for Yoohoo, but it's uh, really an awful. Well, I haven't drink. had an affection for Yoohoo. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that uh, that was that was my uh, Yogi Berra uh, anecdote. Uh, what if you see a fork in the road, take it? Yeah. What's the guy's name that uh, invented the Yoohoo? Do you remember? No, no. <laughs> but, but you know, when I, uh, put it in the Sahara Desert. Good. I'm glad this stuff go, will last forever. It probably stays that way in my body too. You know, yeah. we buried him for a hundred years. We brought him up, and the Yuhu was still in his stomach. You know. uh, did, didn't they find Egyptian uh, mummies that had Yuhu in it? Yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, I also, I, I also, just quickly, I, I also met the guy and interviewed the guy who in, invented the silly putty. Silly putty. It, it was uh, he, World War II. He was working in the lab, and they, uh, uh, they were looking for a substitute for rubber, and he came up with this compound, and they found that you could bounce it and crack it, but it wasn't good as rubber, so they put it up on the shelf, and when he got out of the service, he went back to the Army and said, can I buy that patent from you? And they said, well, you know, it never amounted to anything. Go right ahead. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he bought, took it. And you know why it came in that little egg? Because if you, if you didn't keep it in the egg, it disappeared. It literally really? evaporated, yeah. But you know, he, you could take Silly Putty and put it up against a comic yeah, uh, yeah, and and lift the uh, yeah. lift the ink. And after a while, you have this silly putty with nothing but ink all over it. You know, yeah, a really right. dirty looking silly putty. <laughs> you know, my ki my cousins were being potty trained. They used to uh, call their moms saying "Yoo-hoo" when they wanted their asses wiped too. So. Oh really? Oh okay. <laughs> Do they have a sticker? <laughs> they didn't have a sticker. It just reminded me of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, man yeah you who antidote yeah the, the things we remember as kids yeah <laughs> but uh so i invented uh, the guy who invented silly putty met the guy who invented you who who else uh, did i meet that invented something i had uh, lunch with uh, arnold palmer uh, really yeah. he invented he, in, he invented palmer. he invented a tea drink he yeah. invented the tea drink yeah. yeah that's what he's famous for yeah I'd like an Arnold Palmer. Yeah, he just, I, by the way, we, oh, wow, we just hit the huge number tonight for tonight for this show. Amazing. Guess why? Of course, SG, it's got to be you. Yeah. Well, I, you've been good tonight. I mean, finally, when I had that little thing out with you, you're listening and joining in, and it works really well, you know. <laughs> and, and, and what's nice is you hold up a note saying, wrong, oh. and I think <laughs> that that's, uh, yeah, that's, they will remember you for that, if nothing more. Plus, we see your whole face. Uh, I'll be saying it later. By the way, we last night we found out Scott is uh, now a father-in-law. Uh, do you have any duties as a father-in-law? Like to be a pain in the ass to your son-in-law? Uh, no. 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 No duties. Yeah. And, 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 and you did you were you finally happy they got married? I mean, that, yes. uh, were you bothered by the fact that they went that long without getting married? I wasn't bothered, but I'm happy they're married. Because yeah. you're a Catholic family, right? Well, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go to church every day, don't you? When you can? Yes. 
See, well, I, did, I, well, I didn't go when I was out on out in the um, on vacation, but yeah, every day I'm in Plano. I do. Yeah. What do you do? Now, do you, do you just go there for a short time and just pray and then leave, or what? No, they have they have a service every day. Mm -hmm. Food, mass. Yeah. Hey, it's don't you live across the street from a church? It's not that far. It's uh, 1.2 miles. Uh, well, in Texas, that's the cross the street. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I could walk there if I wanted to. Yeah, but who wants to? Hot. What? Who wants? Who wants? How hot has it been getting out there? Well, actually, it's been very pleasant. We've had a lot of rain this last uh, uh, week or so, and it's only getting into the oh, but the lower nineties. Wow, that that with humidity. It, it was. Uh, it's been. We've been over eighty every day here, and getting up in the nineties some days. Uh, and it's 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 brutal. It's just brutal this year. Usually you get a couple of days off, you know, and it's nice, and you know it's maybe like 75, 80. Uh, but uh, and then the other day it was 90 and there was no humidity. So well, that was nice. that was Unusual. nice, you know. But what you got? I I know Texas. You can't keep a goddamn crease in your pants. Well, that's Houston. Really? Yeah, Houston was just brutal when it, in the summer. It's the only time, first time I ever put a air conditioner in a car. Because, <laughs> yeah, and in, in those days, the cars didn't come with them. You had to get right. the ones that went under the, you know. Yeah, the auxiliary ones yeah, or the aft yeah, market. Yeah, uh, the aftermarket ones. And uh, that was the first place I ever had air conditioning because you couldn't exist in Houston without air conditioning in your car. And you left your car and you went immediately ran for an air-conditioned doorway, you know, and go into... Huh? It's not that bad. Oh, it's, uh, it got brutal. Come ah. on. You're yeah. just from San Francisco where it's like 60 in the summertime. I prefer cold to heat. Yes, Patrick? Uh, I was just going to say, it's, it's like here, you can't be without heat in the winter. I mean, it gets fucking brutal 20 below zero. Uh, yeah, that you you're just not gonna you know like with me when I put my wheelchair in the car, I've got the car running while I'm doing that with the heat blasting. Wow! So as I lean in and out, I get some warmth, you know, and, and the uh, fucking wind is blowing. Patrick, I have a friend that used to live in Rhinelander, Wisconsin, yeah. and I understand that's the one of the coldest places on earth. Uh, it's. It, it's uh, I, got, I got to tell you, the coldest place I ever lived was Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's cold. Uh, uh, I mean, that was it was brutal. I mean, I remember I used to have to go out a half hour before I got off the air during like a news break, and go out and start the car and turn the heater on, and then I would close the door and I would come back in, finish my show, go out there, and thank God it was almost warm inside the car. Wow. Frozen fucking tundra. Somebody once referred to it as the land of 10,000 frozen lakes. <laughs> you know. Yes, Patrick, you're our last person to say something. I'm reading a book by an author who lived in Alberta, Canada. Mm -hmm. and I believe the town was Fairview. And regularly during the winter, it was 40 below zero. Really? So that's pretty fucking cold. Yeah. And that, but it was a dry cold. <laughs> it was a dry cold. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, hey, listen, good uh, talking to all you people tonight. It's been a nice little show uh, here. Uh, uh, Phil, you're not here tomorrow night, right? No, I got a meeting. You got to go you go try and win another one of your photographic things. Uh, this is, uh, uh, no judging on this one's a lecture. It's a lecture? I'll give you a lecture. Uh, <laughs> Hey, SG, SG, you were great tonight. Just terrific. You know? Imagine there's no heaven. Are you, Thank you. Are you playing that? Oh, yeah. It's easy if you try. Yes. D don't sing any more of it. I'll have to pay for it. Uh, no hell below us. Come on, Alex, sing it. I don't remember Love the rest of it. Sky. And uh, uh, say a good night to uh, Patrick. And <laughs> say good night to Scott. And say good night to Kevin. Thank you all for being here. Why don't you all wave goodbye, okay? 
and say goodbye to our fine audience. Hopefully, we'll see some of you tomorrow night. Bye bye. Okay, and that's it. That's our. Uh, that's our. That's what we call the uh, ramble. You see how it's done? Uh, a whole bunch of people yelling and screaming at each other uh, for no apparent reason, uh, which is kind of like family. Uh, anyway. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll be here again tomorrow night. First of all, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next with The Intersection. And then after Jack, at 1 o'clock, there's Connections coming out of Florida. And then we'll see you uh, right after Damian Chaplin at 9.30 does the exchange. We'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.